Hi, I'm Stefan and welcome to the second part of building a medieval scabbard. This part shows the process of covering the sheath in leather, dyeing it in an appropriate color and attaching the belt assembly. Let's start us right away. I use wedge tan gold leather for the main body of the scabbard and calf leather for the belt arrangement. Use the scabbard to measure out the amount of material you will need. Better leave some headroom here. It's always easier to cut away excess material than vice versa. I use the thicker leather and cut them into thinner stripes for the razors in the belt slot of the sheath. Up to my knowledge there is no hard evidence supporting this in high and late medieval scabbards, but looking at several historic illustrations and miniatures can be interpreted this way. I measure out the positions and glue them into place off camera. Next, the lever will be fixed to the core. Here, be very careful to not get wood glue on the skin side of the hide, since it will make nasty stains. Use a liberal amount of wood glue so it's easier to get everything into shape. If you use a thicker piece of leather, you can also wet it beforehand to make it better workable. With this thin goat skin, this is not necessary. I leave some gaps in the glue for later purposes. With a bit of string, I fix the razors into place and everything can be left to dry. Here I start to cut the belt pieces into shape. Measure the length you want on yourself. For the front part you will need an extra material for the wrap around the sheath. For the wrap, I split the ends of the front belt into longer stripes. using a hole punch for a nice finish. With a lever tool I round the edges.
To finally fix the lever into place, I start sewing the backside with a waxed thread. This is not necessary and was not done always. Gluing can be already enough. Pre-puncturing the holes makes it way easier to do so though. To finish the seam I carefully cut away the axis. Here I do some cutouts in the previously unglued parts of the sheath. The belt will be fed through these cuts. Before assembly, I dye the leather with a pro dye. It's a partial oil dye, but it will also behave like a historic dye when the leather ages and it builds up a nice patina. Be mindful of your fingers, wear at least one glove to avoid staining yourself for a few weeks. The belt I dried off camera outside. Here I fit all pieces together and try to find out a nice belt loop. Feel free to try different versions. There's a lot of variations. And if you like it and it works, do it. To give the belt some details, I added these grooves with a lever tool. The tricky part is now to have a nice wrap. I used pliers to get the belts through the material and I will link a nice illustration by Roland Vazeka how to bind these knots.
this was very helpful to use. Now it is finally finished. I lost the original recording, so this footage is a year younger, but you can already see the nice patina forming on the lever. I also added a brass cape and still need to add nice brass buckles to the belt. Up to now it's held by a French knot. I hope you enjoyed this build. Leave a like and share the video. To support us creating such content, consider subscribing. Did you already sheath your swords in historical scabbards? What is your favorite method to build them? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, have a wonderful day.